Hello. Hey, Dave. It's Andrew from here to Zen in Brisbane. How you doing? We're living the dream. Rock on. That's the way. All righty. Let's get stuck into it. Um, no worries. Who came up with the initial idea for updating the songs? Oh, look, we were um, we were doing those um, Zoom meetings. Um, uh, you know, uh, band meetings are the thing I hate the most about being in a band. But then we, we started Zooming just to stay in touch with each other and, yeah, it was just hatched while we were kicking around ideas about what we we're going to do to fill the void that was left, you know, our touring and uh, recording schedule was uh, taken away. Sure. And... Out of out of the songs you recorded, like they, they all sound amazing. Um, you know, Shiver takes on like a bit of a new meaning now. Um, mm. Was there any songs that didn't make the cut? Uh, no, we kind of we, we decided on the, those ones straight up because we we'd never used the technology before, so we wanted to make sure it was uh, that we didn't make it as simple as possible for ourselves, rather than having to go in and learn new stuff. Um, so yeah, we just picked those uh, those five songs specifically. Uh, the one we really wanted to do was uh, a friend of mine was Paulie singing because um, he he didn't do that on the original uh, recording. He didn't sing the lead vocal, but he's been doing it at um, gigs for the last three or four years, you know. And everyone loves it, so it was uh, it was great to to give that one a kind of a different spin as well. Sure, and you've got a uh, new guy behind the kit as well. He's sort of a, a man of many bands himself. So how's that um, transition been? Yeah, Cam's unreal. Uh, he's uh, he's a consummate professional, as you say. He's been in road traders, and uh, I think we met him. The first time we met him was uh, a band called Mater. I don't know if you remember those guys, oh. uh, early, oh. early 2000s. So we met him... Um, when he was playing with those guys and, you know, bumped into him over the years and stuff. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was great when he, when he said he could, uh, step into the breach. He's a fantastic drummer and a, and a great bloke as well. So, um, does that mean the band might start looking at some new material soon? Yes, definitely. Well, uh, once we, once we realised that we could, uh, could get a recording or a bunch of recordings that sounded like we were in a studio together. That was the amazing job that Steve James, our producer, did. Uh, we actually, we've recorded an extra song, which is a brand new song. It's the first new Jet song we've recorded in about, I guess, three years, maybe four years. So uh, that's very exciting. We're all really stoked with that and pumped with the way it came out. So um, it just kind of, now we know, you know, I know, I hope this shit finishes sooner than rather than later. But at least we know we can uh, we can actually come up with new music and record it in that uh, in that fashion. So uh, it's worked out unreal for us, really. And like new music's important. Like of course with the big ACDC announcement yesterday. Mm. Um, do you hope that people being sort of forced away from the live arena and to revisit actual music again might see people? investing in more physical product and actually investing more in bands again yeah look i mean i think um i i, I think as far as you know um bands realizing that uh you know that you can come up with all kinds of excuses while you're not re recording and stuff like that whether that be touring or whatever but i think the old make hay, make hay while the sun shines uh ethos is going to come into play i think it's going to be a great time over the next two three years for the Australian live scene, um, because I don't think uh, even when they they relax, uh, even that when they relax the kind of the, the laws, the quarantine laws, and that I can't see big American bands getting up saying, "Let's go around the other side of the world and do a tour and hope that another virus doesn't hit and we don't get stuck in Australia for the rest of our lives." You know, I don't. I think uh, bands might be getting it will become a little bit gun shy. So. You know, in the make hay while the sun shines thing, I think Australian bands really got to get out there. And, and I think, you know, venues, uh, the ones that survive are going to realise that uh, they really need to get behind local local acts and, and help them out. So is there any up-and-coming local acts that have really caught caught your ear? Um, none, none for a while, actually. I, I, I did hear a song the other day that sounded mighty. It was on Triple M. It was called House of Hands or... Oh yeah, hands of a house, something. Um, and I heard that song, and I thought that sounded pretty good. 
Um, and that, um, is it the DMAs? I mean, they're already kind of kicking goals all over the joint anyway. But, um, no, because I haven't been out on tour, we haven't kind of had any support acts or anything like that uh, with us. So it's, uh, it's hard to keep abreast of the, the, the new up-and-comers. Okay. And, like, you think about what's going to come back. And, and for me, I think we're going to see things like the the Aussie festivals coming back. Mm. So yeah. you've been mainstays on things like Red Hot Summer Tour, which I've been lucky to see you on a couple of times. How would you describe Red Hot Summer Tour and things like that to people that have never been? Oh, that's just fantastic. I mean, uh, basically, it's uh, it's all the bands that um, anywhere from the from the seventies to the nineties. Um, um, the one we were just on uh, before this all went to crap was uh, the Living End, Hunters and Collectors, James Rain, the Angels, Baby Animals, um, Boom Crash Offer was just unreal. Um, so I mean, uh, and everyone's just out there to, to you know play their best songs, and and even though you know we're all but being around a while, everyone still wants to be the best band on the day. So it's uh, it's just a, a great atmosphere. I, I absolutely love him. Dwayne McDonald, who uh, came up with that, uh, with the whole process, is uh, a genius. They're great to be involved in. And backstage, it's kind of like uh, the school playground, isn't it, for you guys? <laughs> Indeed. I mean, we, yeah, it's, it's great fun. And um, and the fact that we were doing, you know, like two a week, um, you know, I mean, it, it really felt like we were on a, on a real tour, you know? So, yeah. um, you know, back, back in the days, obviously, you'd be doing five and six nights a week but um but no it was uh, just fantastic to hang out with everyone and they're the, they're well, missing everyone greatly over the last six months because yes, even when we're not on those tours you bump into people in airport lounges and you know service stations and stuff like that so yeah it's been uh, i think it's been pretty hard on all the users and uh, and, and crews out there got, got any bucket list bands that Dwayne hasn't popped on one of those tours yet well, I'd love, I'd love Chisel. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love him to, uh, I'd love to get Chisel. I'd love to, I've done plenty of runs with uh, Barnsley and Mossy, uh, but I've never, ever played with Chisel, so that would be, uh, that would have to be top of the bucket list. Okay, and talking of touring, you've you've been on some pretty massive tours from, well, I'm remembering early 2000s, a couple of big arena tours. What's been that one band that you go, wow, they, they actually didn't treat us like shit. It was lovely. Well, look, Kiss were just uh, brilliant to us on uh, the two or three tours that we've done with them. Um, I, I can specifically remember two occasions where we just, at uh, the start of tours, where Paul Stanley came in and welcomed everyone and thank you for being on the tour. We've heard so much about you guys. We love your music. <laughs> so he was just as gracious as all get out. So, um, and, you know, I was a mad Kiss fan from from when I was a kid and, and the, the, the great thing about the, the Kiss concerts where you look out in the crowd and kids are looking at the, that Kiss and they're not going oh look they look old they yeah. just look like Kiss yeah, was, <laughs> I, 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 yeah no no it was great they, they, they were great tours to, uh, to do and uh, I actually tried to get a bit of uh, Gene Simmons blood on me off the stage a couple of times but that congeals really heavily yeah, uh, <laughs> throw shit man you don't want it. it's both horrible shit <laughs> now, um, has the band got any plans to sort of release any archival material like demos or live shows in the future? Um, I'm not sure. Where, definitely live shows. We've got to, plenty of live stuff that we've got to. It's um, just a matter of getting the money to kind of uh, you know mix it and get it up to, to standard and you know get it pressed and everything. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, Steve James, our producer, must have plenty of that stuff, and we're about to. Uh, next year will be the uh, 30th anniversary of the release of All for One, so we're re-recording that. And uh, be nice. That's a good idea. It's a good idea to have some uh, outtakes and some demos. That's a good idea. Oh. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I'm I'm a fan of the expanded edition. I love it. I love mm. every band. Yeah, I love it too. I reckon it's some, of, it's some of the best work. So, what about the songs you hear? You go, why didn't that even make it on the record? What are you talking about? But, exactly. You know, yeah, so I love, uh, I love some of the, the more obscure stuff. My, one of my favourite Kiss albums is uh, music from the Elder. Just love it. Yeah, well, 
Like I, like, I grew up on them like you did, so the the Elder sort of has a pretty special place. Mm, yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah, I remember when I first got it, my brother uh, my brother lent me $5.99 or something to get it, or four ninety nine, and uh, mate, I don't reckon I've ever listened to it or I haven't had to listen to it from start to finish. <laughs> it's yeah. unreal. Yeah. <laughs> but um, speaking of albums, you recorded a country solo album back in the day. Mm-hmm. What's the chances? What's the chances of another Dave Gleason solo album, be it whatever genre? Well, I've actually, uh, I've, I've been working on uh, some songs with Steve Balby oh, yeah. um, for, a, for a solo album, which, uh, look, well, I, went, I went to record a, a follow-up to that album in about 2003, because um, it came out in 2002, and then, yeah, I just, uh, the Jets started up in 2004, and then off we, off we went again. So um, I've had a bunch of songs in the uh, in the offing for a long time. And then I went and wrote about oh, seven or eight with uh, with Steve Balby recently, or uh, in April or, or March. And uh, more recently, uh, while this COVID thing's been on, I've uh, met a bloke called Gwyn Ashton, who's a uh, a guitar player of some note, bit of a bluesy. Um, well, what, I've heard people re- refer to him as like a one-man Led, Led Zeppelin. No. Uh, he's got good, good fat rock and chunky bluesy riffs. And we've written about uh, 15 songs together and we've just started knocking them into shape. So uh, that's a, another project. So I've, I've been lucky to uh, to meet up with, with you know, some people who really wanted to get some stuff together. So. And when, when we get... Gigs back in full swing, Dave. Is there one like venue where you go? For, I can't wait to get back into that place. Oh look, there's uh, oh there's so many of them. <laughs> um, I mean, there's uh, up there, up, up in Brizzy, I'd have to say. Um, oh, what's that one we did recently? The Tivoli. That's just brilliant. Yeah. I absolutely love that joint. Um, where else is there? Um, I mean, I've been doing gigs at the Gov, this streaming thing, but I'd like to do a real gig at the Gov with a full crowd and a full band in there. Um, where else is it? Oh, there's the highest, uh, the, the uh, one in Melbourne called the High Five Bar, is that what it's called? Yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting all the names of the joints I've, that I've played a thousand of times. But um, look, I, mate, I can't wait to just get out and, uh, and get on tour again. And, I've had six months of not seeing mates and people that I know, family and stuff all around the country just because uh, haven't been coming and going. Yeah. And we'll finish up with this. What's your best ISO advice you could give anyone? The best ISO advice? Use your time wisely, I'd have to say. I, I think if, if anyone gets to the end of this when they've been, especially like Muzos and that... Um, if you get there and think, oh, I should have written some more songs, or, you know, I've got yourself to blame for that. So, um, yeah, just use, make, make sure you use the time, don't just sit around wasting it. Awesome, mate. I'll let you get back to your evening. Thanks so much for the chat. Rock on, thanks, Heath.